your textbook does an example of the conformers of 2-methylbutane. So if we take one of these hydrogens off our butane molecule and replace it with a methyl group, we can have 2-methylbutane. And you'll notice that with the 2-methylbutane isomer, there's no way to avoid having some strain. And if I put this methyl group anti to the methyl group there, then these two are gauche. And if I put this methyl group anti, then these two are gauche. So there's going to be no strain-free isomer conformer for 2-methylbutane. So let's draw the conformers for 2-methylbutane. Here. Sorry. This hydrogen is going to come down 
here, so we see this other hydrogen. And I will have the CH3 there, and the CH3 up here. Now when I rotate it again, the hydrogen comes down, and the CH3 here, here, and in my final rotation, we'll put this hydrogen over here, and this CH3 here, And you'll notice in all my eclipse confirmations, I'm making sure that only one of the atoms attached to the front carbon is between any two of the atoms on the back. So this hydrogen is between the top CH3 and the hydrogen on the left. This couple over here is between the top CH3 and the hydrogen on the right. This couple over here is between the two hydrogens. So in all cases, I've got it so that I don't have two front. So here, my front carbon, I've written it, so it's always trailing just a little bit. And over here, I've written it so that it's always leading just a little bit. So the CH3 is slightly leading that CH3. This hydrogen is slightly leading that hydrogen. The CH3 is slightly leading that hydrogen. And I left it here with slightly leading. It doesn't matter if you write, draw them so that it's always slightly leading, or you draw them so it's always slightly following. It doesn't actually even matter if you switch back and forth. On all the previous examples I've shown, I was consistent that I kept it so that it was either always following or always leading. But it really makes no difference because both of these represent the eclipse conformer where there's actually a zero degree diagonal layer. So what we'd like to do is we'd like to put this on an energy diagram and we'd like to have that energy diagram to scale so that we know exactly what the energies are. So let's put the energy diagram over here. Where we'll be able to use the whole board. So we have our angle of rotation. Strain. 
And then I'm going to move on to seeing what I have for strain in the 180 degree conformer. And I have a hydrogen hydrogen eclipsing. And I have a hydrogen methyl eclipsing. of those eclipses are different energies. This was about 1 kilocalorie per mole. This was about 1.3 kilocalorie per mole. This is 2.9 kilocalorie per mole. So adding those together, I get 5.2 kilocalorie per mole net strain energy. One, 3.9 plus 1.3, 5.2. So the 240 degree conformer is a strain, and the steric strain is significantly larger at 2.9 kilocalories per mole versus 1 or 1.3. Well, I will have my 240 degree conformer. All the way up there. Now I need to look at the 300. and this 
second most stable conformer, and we would expect to get a different number because now there are two possible low energy and only one possible high energy versus two higher energy and one low energy, we will expect to actually see a larger preference for the more stable conformer, either in the 60 or the 180 degree, or sorry, either the 0 to 120 degree versus the 240 degree conformer. And you could do the same dimethyl butane.